Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast presented by Zwift. The start of the Vuelta a Burgos Feminas, a women's world tour race, four stages obviously in the Burgos region in north of Spain. A pretty strong start list with SD Works having the GC favourite of Demi Vollering, no Annemiek van Flurten here. Uh, Ashley Mulman was going to start, I think, at Burgos, but she didn't. They remember there was a crash earlier in the week that involved Vollering and Mulman. Uh, Vollering, I think it was at Durango, Durango, Emma Kumin, yep. Saria, and both of them were involved with Vollering starting and Mulman's not. Uh, but still, Vollering's got an official like Shackley, Fournier. No lead out, though, for Kopecky, really. Kopecky kind of freelancing. Other strong sprinters here, we have Sarah Roy, uh, Diedrichsen for Trek Segafredo, or, or Hosking. We didn't really know which rider they were initially going to go for and today's stage was likely going to be a sprint although we had some some light echelon action benji yeah quite certainly it was Trek Segafredo that decided to light it up at certain points in the race with roughly i think 30 to 20 kilometers to go was basically the uh, most open area and there were two victims that could fight for gc actually three victims that could fight for gc and that included first of all paulina royakers who has been riding very, very strong recently. She was first caught behind initially. Um, she actually won, I think, Durango Durango last week as well and got second in Itzulia just after uh, after Volring. So has been in incredible form lately and is one of the riders I was looking forward to for this race. And she was able to save herself from that echelon problem because she ended up attacking that second echelon, riding away solo. Then I think her teammate um decided to drop back from the front group and she ended up pacing Royakers back towards the front. I think it was Amal Yusik, by the way, that paced Royakers back to the front group just before the action started kicking off again because it was a false flat uphill for a second there. And uh, then attacks came again and then another moment happened. I don't know what happened at that moment, but again, Royakers was behind. And I don't know if that was because she imploded after doing the effort of trying to bridge up towards the front, but she wasn't the only victim. I think Olivia Baril was also in there, Canadian that has been performing well. I think it was at Itzulia that she was performing very well before she uh, fell through the eyes on the final stage. And then also uh, Veronica Ewers, I think she did manage to come back as well. So um, basically Ewers and also uh, Ruakers made it to that group again before we started heading towards the final sprint. Trek tried again here and there, but... It was heading towards a sprint that, that was very clear, and then we saw them all lining up, but it was uh, mainly Trek taking it up, right? Yeah, I thought I saw Hosking leading out of 1,500 meters, and then I'm not sure was it which was the Canyon Shram rider. With like 400 meters to go, she goes to the front of the peloton, I presume just leading out for Roy, and then the Movistar rider who had been doing a lead out, she, I think it was, was it Shabby? I'm not sure. Um the Movistar rider slips into a wheel and slips out, kind of like uh, what happened in Tour de Hungary the other week with Mezgetz, and it loses the wheel. And then Diedrichsen, I, I initially was like, oh, it's it's Royce, because it was like red national champs jersey. She shouldn't lead out. Kopecky's in the wheel. No, it was Diedrichsen, who's on Trek Segafredo in the Danish national champs kit, doing the lead out pretty much for uh Lotte Kopecky and the finish was kind uh, slightly uphill she did have Emma Norsgaard in the wheel who is good on these sort of finishes uh but she's on Movistar and Kopecky opens it up really really early goes to the barriers she has Norsgaard in the wheel and she just absolutely dusts everybody coming back and not even she gets Norsgaard like off the wheel and it's Teresa Numanova, the 23 year old Czech rider on Live Racing Extra, who comes second. She has no other top tens this year. She had a second in Tour de Suisse last year. She's, yeah, she's obviously improving. Like, that's a crazy result, to yeah, be honest, <laughs> beating Norsgaard. But yeah, Kopecky looking good, Benji. I was surprised she beat Norsgaard so easily. Yeah, and like, I gotta be honest, like, every single time when I get into these, uh, races when I'm looking for Kopecky. I look for a Belgian national champs jersey and I keep forgetting about the leader's jersey because it was always know, on Van yeah. shoulders last year. So seeing it on Kopecky this time, I was so confused initially. I was like, where is she? And then I realized, oh yeah, leader's jersey, obviously. 
And um, she wore that UCR leader's jersey in purple and so forth because we don't have enough purple in that peloton, apparently. But um, yeah, wonderful sprint. Absolutely destroying Norsgaard, like you mentioned. And it's indeed Neumannova that did a wonderful sprint there. And uh, I think that I was... Uh, I don't know, I was expecting more from Trek after what they did during the stage, and Didriksen ended up getting eighth. Hosking, she did the work initially, so I don't know, didn't exactly uh, come out the way I hoped it would for that team in this race. And so that's Kapega going into the GC lead, but she won't, uh, at least unless she's changed a lot as a rider, be winning GC here. This is one of the uh, few races on the calendar that has a genuine proper mountaintop finish that decides GC Laguna Stanaya of you know you'll know that if you're if you watch a lot of men's racing from the Vuelta Burgos where Sosa's won Lopez has won hard finish and last year Anna van der Breggen was dominant on it it was a Dutch one two three four actually on the stage she beat Annemiek van Flirten in GC uh yeah she was so good on on this stage last year and Vollering came third. So we don't have Under Bregan of Van Vleuten here. No Mulman here, who did a lead out on the climb, I think. Vollering was on 20 seconds, 15 seconds ahead of Royakas, but Royakas looks better than last year. So Vollering's not going to ride away with this as long as Royakas is still holding her form. Uh, and we'll also get an opportunity to see Marta Cavalli's pure climbing or Shabby's pure climbing as well. Nah, Royakas is leader, 100% for Cannon Tram. Yeah, she is. May she probably do the lead up for Royakas. So hopefully there's an upset. It would be nice for Canyon Shram to overthrow SD Works at this race, but SD Works has a really strong climbing squad with Shackley and Fisher Black uh, as support, even without Mormon. Thanks as always to Zwift for supporting the Lantern Recycling Podcast. As I've said, they make your online cycling training fun. They have for Benji and myself. If you want to check out Zwift, you can go to Zwift. Dot com for a free seven day trial through the link down below and maybe follow them on instagram as well to be kept abreast of the news happening with swift which there's some pretty big news coming this year with swift but yeah we'll be back with coverage of welter burgos stage two tomorrow it looks like another stage for Kopecky. to be honest if i was sd works i'll control it with a few rolling climbs and the last one about five uh, four kilometers from the finish but it could be uh, maybe a late flyer uh in that finish brown yeah on that last little climb yeah perhaps and it's like i've got the idea of like oh the team of sd works is here yes she's got proper riders but volring ain't gonna ride for kopecky so it has to come down to fisher black True. shackley funia and so forth and they're from like there's a possibility that a flyer could go away that a grace brown could be able to ride away or a small group can ride away and this could go uh, into a, a small group sprint of breakaway riders, not really like late breakaway riders, if that makes any sense. But hey, I'm uh, I'm going to go for the uh, outsider pick race Brown for this one. I'm going Kapeki back to back. But yeah, I can see that happening because with Laguna Stanaya coming up, you don't really have to care if a rider takes 10 seconds yep. on you if they're the right rider. But that's all from us today. Hope you enjoyed it. We're back with the double header tomorrow and did double headers for the next three days and we'll see you then ciao